This is Josiah Plays Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. We are here in Rathir, in the lower city. I'm playing my character, Cato Bloodrose the Paragon, complete with spiky red armor. And we're going, and we're doing the quest Bad Blood. Insert Cato Swift song here. And I need to get into Einar Abergast's house because I believe he has poisoned Malian, the son of House Anwan, and we need to try to confront him about it. So here we go. You can enter. You can enter. You can enter. Can I enter? They say he's been in there for years. Oh yeah, this guy is some kind of Howard Hughes type they situation. Say he's been in there for years. Crazy hermit dude. This way. Who are you? Lyria, what has he done? I can see he hasn't exactly been busy tidying up in here. Just look at it. A lot of, a lot of webs. Just look at it. Just look at it. Everyone was frolicking and happy, says Nox, and then someone had to eat the hamburger from the tree and let loose terrible things like work demons. You're right, Nox. That is how it went down. A real tragedy. It's the doctrine of original beef. First came this realization that you could force people to work for you. You didn't have to do shit. That principle probably worked for hunter-gatherers, too. Then people refined that principle into the modern global economy. I do understand that, but what I understand is why any, why like people put up with it. I understand why people put up with it now, because they can't do shit. Because there are literally army, armies of armed people that will stop us if we try to if we try to say oh hell no to the people that have all the power and wealth. But like, how did it happen in the beginning that people were just like, oh this works for us? How about you certain people stop doing anything and we'll start doing everything and giving you more than oh, anybody else else's share? We're cool with that. I suppose they used religion, right? To to, like control people into that kind of shit. Oh, it's this is what the gods want the spirits. You don't want to piss off the spirits So give us all your shit Otherwise spirits be mad Then it became gods be mad then it became just the one god be mad Then by that point they had, they had amassed so much power and wealth and had enough armed force behind them that they they could stop even using God as an excuse. They could just say, we have all the money and power and weapons, so. He was a good servant. I knew him all his life. And now I have brought that life to a sweet and dutiful end. Oh, this is him. Listen, Elf Professor X without a wheelchair. It's not a good comparison. Doctrine of original beef. That's right, Nox. Individualism cannot organize. That's a good point. This takes a few people who work together to manipulate others. That's true. Yeah, I mean, the people who, who want to maintain the status quo are willing to kill to maintain it. 99% of the people who want change are not willing to kill for what they want. So the people that are willing to kill are always going to rule over the people who aren't willing to kill. I mean, that just makes sense. You killed your own servant? This guy is creepy, this I Abergast. It was as he wished, though I know you will disbelieve me. I tell you no lies. Was he the poisoner? No, it was not him. He was my disciple, but it was I and I alone who began the work of death. There would have been more death, but no matter. Balan's testament burns bright this day. Oh no, he's a religious nut. He's killing people on behalf of the god of death, really? You're digging your own grave here, pal. And I will dig your grave as a result. Balin's testament? Let's pretend I don't know who Balin is for a moment. Why? Balin is the god of death, of endings. 
His testament is simply that all that live must die. And I, I am his priest. Why the fuck would you worship someone like that? That's asinine. You are one of the ones that live. Okay. What, what exactly is your grudge? And perhaps I should say, what exactly is your damage? If Coriana had not slighted my love those years ago, if she had not drowned my green spring in barren snow, her house would have flourished while my soul withered. I would never have known the beauty of death, the words of Balin. I resolved my gift would start with her, but now I see my time has come. I welcome Balin's embrace. Well, I'm about to bring you some Balin's embrace right now. But before... I fight you, I'm gonna stop and journal about this. I traced Mally and Anwen's poisoning to a hermit merchant named Abergast, who had clearly gone mad and joined Balin's testament. Coriana Anwen should know of this. Balin's testament is like the Old Testament, but more metal. Actually, the Old Testament's pretty fucking metal already. The basic idea is that robber barons arose. Armed thugs who stole people's shit under threat of violence. Then they settled down and started defending the poor fuckers they were exploiting. Then these grew into cities and countries, gave rise to the merchant class, money-based economy. Eventually the merchant class was so successful they could afford more mercenaries than the nobility. People who worked together also caught bigger meals, and if you were not part of the gang, you were on the fringe. That's true. Why is video game insanity always so super villainy? I don't know, because apparently people who create fiction, for the most part, obviously there are exceptions, people who create fiction in whatever form can't seem to conceive of people who are legitimately insane, but like also not dangerous and not maladjusted. Well, I mean, maybe maladjusted, but like still able to function with society and, and be a decent person while continuing to be insane. Because in every, like, fucking movie and video game and stuff, if a fucker is insane, they're, like, the raving, homicidal version of insane. That's, like, the only version of insane we ever see in media, basically. Working together to make things unfair is natural. Well, see, my theory is there was a time in human history, and by that I really mean human prehistory, when people had really had to work together like you needed everybody in the tribe you needed as many people as possible for everybody to survive or for as many people to survive as possible so people had to be really cooperative and once we figured out agriculture and building permanent settlements and building you know good shelter and not having to hunt and gather and learning how to you know not have to worry as much about the weather and animals and shit killing us once we developed some technology we realized, oh shit, we don't have to work together as much anymore. We don't actually need all these people. We can let some of these fuckers die because we'll be fine without them. And, and once you had that idea in our head, that's it. We're off to the races. You know what I'm saying? Are other versions of insane? Good point, Tim. Primitive economies tend to be super fair. It would be quietly insane over here reading a book and minding my own business. What are you reading? In the absence of technology, they do. Yeah. Alright, let's kill this fucking guy. Oh. He just killed himself. Well, that's... Weird. Oh. He had good stuff on him. Death's Vestments. An enchanted tunic dedicated to Balin, the god of death. Not bad. What it look like. Hmm. Less death vestmenty than I would have expected. Looks alright, but shit, let's get that shit out of here. Oriana Anwen should know of this. Well. Now that we know this dude's a nutter butter and he just died and he's also evil and shit, I feel pretty justified in looting his house. Just look at it. You may go. I will report to the watch. Well, I'll go after I 
look for more clues. Search for clues as to this dastardly... Oh, I'm not going to steal, though, if it counts as stealing. Here we go. I think I may have gotten one or two additional followers. Awesome. Thank you, son. I really appreciate it. Whatever it was that you... Whatever, whatever call that you sent out seems to have worked really well. The aboriginals of Australia lived with basically fire as the pinnacle of technology for 50,000 years. Fire is still the pinnacle of technology, I'm just saying. Just saying. Pathfinder, cool. Pathfinder is a good rule set and an interesting world from what I know of it, which is very little. Because I've hardly ever played any Pathfinder, even though I do think it's a good game. I played a shitload of 3.5 D&D, though, which, you know, is a, a lot of what Pathfinder is. Burning Jug equals Pinnacle of Technology, yeah. I think I'd rather play just about any other edition of D&D besides 3.5 though, slash Pathfinder. It is really good. I'm not saying it isn't good. I'm saying I just don't like it just as much as... Leogriff's many marvels. I don't like it as much as... Um, second... Fourth, fifth. I guess I'd probably rather play Pathfinder than first edition AD and D. You liked it a lot of three point five. Stand aside. When three point five first came out, I fucking loved it. I thought it was amazing and revolutionary and great. And I played it for quite a while, um enjoying it, but then I don't know, once I started playing it at high level and DMing it at high level, I really got super sick of it. And I felt like it was too complex, there was too much stuff, there was too many rules, there was it was there was too much minutia and it was not balanced well and there was just too many problems with it. You're not really a fan of the D and D framework. All right, Coriana. Guess what? Good news. I, the guy who, well, he's dead. It is done. Was he here? Take this, and I, I must make a confession. I nearly married Einar Abagast many years ago. My parents forbade it. I knew it was wrong. That he didn't deserve to be treated so. The follies of youth. I never dreamed he would grow so bitter and turn to that dark cult. Never. Well, you know, he said that you drowned his spring trees in snow or some shit like that. So basically, you made him really sad and you pretty much turned him into a psycho death worshipper. But, you know, not your fault. Whatever. Crazy people be crazy. But you say you almost married him, so I guess you must have liked him at some point. Sometimes I think if I had married him, I now would be no better than the wyvern gif. And in the years since I broke our vows, I have had my own share of tragedy and loss. Yet I have not let it ruin me. But such is life in House Anwan. Well, I hope Malian's okay. Glad to help. Goodbye. Let me journal about this. I have completed my 107th task. Einar Abagast had somehow gone mad after years in solitude in his great house. He believed himself one of Balin's testament, and planned to kill as much of Rathia as he could. But it seems the roots of this began with Koriana Anwan, who long ago spurned his love and left him to bitter solitude. Let's get some good, nice uh, victim blaming in there real quick while we can. 
basically your sign got poisoned because of you your fault completely your fault 100 percent all right so the wyvern gifts are a, another like rich family they're a they're a merging of the the wyvern family and the gif family wyvern gif oh and now you're going to show me an actual gif file of a wyvern <laughs> D&D &D does what D&D &D does extremely well. What does D&D &D do? Would you say that current editions, recent editions of D&D, &D, or like the most recent, do the same thing that the original editions do? Because the more I look into old, old D&D &D stuff, the more I think the game was really different back then. Like, it feels like the, the focus of the game was really different back then. Oriator Shield. This shield decorations honor the allied races in Oriator's Doff. We've been to Oriator's um, place, his, his tomb. The Dakofar Army, the Almain Gold Order, the Losofar Lyrian Grace, and the Crooked Balance of the Varani. Well, it's kind of not good, but it'll make a fine thing to sell at the store. Yeah, you're right. Second, well, second edition, toward the end, started getting a lot more like third edition. I mean, 2.5e, which is actually one of my favorite editions. It's not officially called 2.5e, but you know what I'm talking about. If you if you've ever looked at the player's option rule books that came out, they pretty much constitute 2.5e. I actually love that shit. But even with Steven so it was very different from third edition. So what are we doing next? Uh we're not doing that, we're not doing that, we're not doing that, we're not doing that. We're do we're doing that, I think. Yeah. We're going to the Sky Crown. Savant Engar has requested that I meet him atop a mountain known as the Sky Crown in Erethel. It is somehow related to the Sunstone, the artifact I recovered from Aod, and the Froststone, the artifact I recovered from Shardfall. So finally we, gonna get, we get to go up on top of that huge mountain. Like, the only huge mountain in the game, basically. The Watch basically. sees all in Raphir. I started a second ad game for the first time in eight years. Yeah, I'm actually, I've actually been working on a second ad campaign. Well, a 2.5 ad campaign. Uh, and I'm actually really excited about it. Do I forgot how much models. there was to like about that system. I mean, it's still not my favorite system. My favorite is 4th edition. Actually, my favorite D&D &D is 4th edition. That's not my favorite role-playing game. My favorite role-playing game is 2nd edition Shadowrun. And I probably like the new versions of Shadowrun too if I gave him a chance. But 4th edition is my favorite version of D&D, &D, but I think 2.5 is my second favorite version of D&D. &D. Well, the original old D&D &D stuff was about a lot of things. It was way more simulationist, right? And it was about, there was like extensive rules for things like building castles and building keeps and becoming a noble and, and attaining political power and recruiting armies and mass battles between armies and like there was so much of that kind of stuff in the old versions of D&D &D, then it really felt like that was the goal right your character you were supposed to become politically powerful and wealthy and you know make your own stronghold and 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 gather your followers and stuff and that was like kind of what it was about um and it really went away from all that. And, and you know, there's a lot more rules about crafting and making items and, and stuff like that. Whereas in the later editions, it became more about just having adventures. You know, like this is about, this is about adventures. Going on adventures, having action adventures. 
um, and not about like simulating a medieval like life, you know, or like simulating a medieval career. It was about it's just about having adventures. That's it, you know. And to me, that's an improvement because I'm not interested in all that other shit. Where am I even going? I need to go to Skycrown, which is over here. But a lot of people didn't like that, obviously. Because they're more interested in that other stuff. Yeah, and in, in a, oh yeah, that's another big thing. In early versions of D&D, you were expected to die. You were expected that your character was going to die. Getting a character to high level at all was considered like a really difficult and unlikely proposition. Um, your characters were much more throwaway back then. Whereas it became, like, more of a game about a narrative about specific characters where, like, your characters are not really supposed to die. I mean, they still can die, but, like, the, the idea being that death should be rare and, and, and unusual, whereas in the old thing it was, like, not dying was rare and unusual. That war priest is such a pain in my ass. This guy's kicking my ass a little bit. Kicking my ass a lot, actually. Yeah, so many random tables in old school D&D to give a rule set to everything. Yeah, because it was supposed to be very simulationist. Because it came out of wargaming. And so the kind of... I would say the kind of nerds that played D&D originally are quite a bit different from the kind of nerds that mostly play it today. Why am I crackling with endless lightning? It doesn't seem... Like what's supposed to be happening in my life. If you're a simulationist fan. Interest diverges towards drama and mystery and puzzles. Uh, D&D diverges to be pretty much the definition of a game system. Yeah, I played I played all the Palladium games. Rifts, Palladium Fantasy Roleplay, uh, Heroes Unlimited. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now I stopped crackling. Alright, I guess we're going in here. So this is the giant mountain. Ninjas and Super Spies is like the one Palladium game that I never actually played. But it had the same rule set. All those games had the same rule set. They just had different, you know, themes. Gerps I've never actually played. TMNT was awesome, yeah. It was awesome, especially since I was such a huge fan of, you know, the TMNT franchise at the time. I was pretty young. I had all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles toys and stuff. Well, I, I don't think I had all of them, but I had some of them. Yeah, I never played GURPS, but I did play a decent amount of Champions, which is Hero System, which is similar to GURPS in many ways. In terms of crunchiness and, you know, it being like all about point by and being able to make your character however the fuck you want and... and you know, really complicated, crunchy mechanics and stuff.
There's a whole lot of ugly in this room. I don't feel like this is going to go well for me. Okay, it hurt. the bridge! I knew he was gonna do that. I knew it was gonna hurt. it many times we had a great idea for a game with no preference for the underlying system yeah it's been recommended to me before for certain kinds of games hold to execute bud press the awesome button sorry i didn't i didn't hold to execute enough need to learn to execute. Let's get some black cohosh, rarest herb in the game. And by rarest, I mean the opposite of rarest, whatever that is. Most ubiquitous herb in the game. The trap right here. Ah! Dude, I, I ran up to that thing and pressed the disarm this shit button. And instead, that did not occur. Disarm this shit. Thank you. Ever had the faintest interest in heroes, superheroes? I would say it is not my favorite genre. Um, I think I like fantasy and sci-fi and like gothic and Lovecrafty, and I like all those genres better than superhero, but I still like superheroes. I mean. The thing about Champions that was cool is you could play really any kind of game with it. You didn't have to play superheroes per se at all. You could just play modern day normal people. Or modern day very skilled people but without any superpowers. And the system completely supported that. But it was a, it is a little bit complicated both to learn and to make characters for that game. By a little bit complicated, I actually mean a lot complicated. So, it's like, it's a hard one to introduce new people to. Not nearly as a... It is quite robust, but it's not very accessible, one might say. Easy Dispel Chest. Overwhelmingly complex rule system. Yeah, it was a really good generic system. I mean, I don't know which one is actually better in terms of a generic system, GURPS or, or a hero system. I suspect they're pretty equivalent. I would have to really, you know, explore both of them thoroughly. Like, the newest version of hero system and the latest version of GURPS, and I'd have to check them both out to see which one I thought got the job done better. But I suspect they're pretty equivalent from what I've seen of GURPS, because I've looked through some GURPS books and stuff. I just haven't actually played it. But I don't really like that much simulationism, honestly. In my even though the the RPG that I'm creating myself that I've been working on off and on, Triskelium, is actually pretty simulationist. <laughs> Surprisingly. Considering I'm not that into simulate I mean it's got very, very crunchy, complex systems for certain things. There's a lot of traps up ahead. I thought I was meeting dude here. Where the fuck is he? Oh, he said meet him atop the mountain. So I gotta go through a bunch of bullshit before I even find him. 
Alright, I know there's a bunch of traps up ahead because I can see them on the mini map. Grab some greater charged ribbits. No. Motherfucker. No! I'm not a ping pong ball. Oh good, now I just took a shitload of damage and now I have to fight 50 Etans. That's great. That is exactly what the developers intended to happen there, I promise you. Developers are so pleased right now if they can see this. They're like, yes! He got bounced around between the mines and then immediately aggroed the Etans while at half health. This is this is all we wanted from our lives. <laughs> I hate when monsters leash in games. Don't leash, just keep chasing me. trying to have my bullshit. Honestly, I hate leashing, because it can be exploited, too. Like, I basically just exploited it. I didn't mean to. Like, I wasn't trying to exploit the leashing, but nevertheless, I actually did. Oh, motherfucker! I tend to dislike simple systems. Well, it depends on who's running the game, I guess. If you have a really... No. If you have a really good DM, extremely simple systems can be fantastic. Because they put most of the power in the hands of the DM to make shit up on the fly. And if you have a great DM, then that really works out well. But since you usually don't have a great DM, I find... <laughs> The more simple the system is, the more it leads, leaves room for the DM to just fuck it up. And the more difficult it is to DM a system like that well, as, as, as well. Streaming some of the creation process. Wait, what creation process? Oh, you mean of my RPG? I, I, I streamed a little bit of me kind of showing what I was working on. I mean, I actually have a thing done that I can show off that's not the complete game, but it's a complete character creation for the game. And it's in, like, a finished document that I was going to, like, disseminate on the internet to try to get some, like, feedback and playtesting of character creation. But the problem, of course, now is it's out of date, because in my new version of the game, I've gone to Diceless. In the latest, the latest incarnation of the system, there's no dice rolls whatsoever. And so the character creation thing that I made before is, is based on the old system, and so it would need some updating. Because honestly, I hate randomness. I really do. I know everybody's fucking super enamored with randomness. Oh, rolling dice, rolling dice. They always talk about that too. Like when they're talking about role-playing games, it's all about hanging out and rolling some dice. I hate that. I The dice rolling part is my... Dude, I was literally in the middle of disarming it. That's some bullshit. The dice rolling part is my least favorite part of playing RPGs. Um, I want more player decision and less randomness to determine the outcome of events. I want systems that are complex enough that you have to decide a bunch of things. And depending on how you decide those things determines whether or not you're gonna be successful or not. Versus, I just roll a random die and it tells me whether or not I did a thing. 
that's not as nearly as fun to me. So my system is more based around sort of complexity of of deciding how your character is going to do something and also managing resources. Every time, every time with the you motherfuckers. Camera angle, hello. Camera angle. And managing resources. So instead of rolling a die in my system to determine whether you succeeded or not, you have to you have to do things to improve your chances of succeeding. And by chances, it's not really a chance. For any given thing you want to do, there's a certain number you need. And you've got various things that will add to your base until you have enough to either get that number or not but then you also have you also have spendable resources that you can use like sort of strategically to allow yourself to succeed at things that you ordinarily couldn't but those those resources are not unlimited so you have to decide when and how to use them and how to how to most wisely allocate those things to um be able to succeed at the things you really need to succeed at And, and then, you know, try to figure out the best ways to, to replenish those resources, to get more. Which is based on how you play the game, not based on any kind of die rolls. Now, how well that will work in practice, I have no idea. But in theory, it sounds great to me. I've never playtested this game yet because it's not ready. To play test. I see you. Oh, God. I'm doing so bad at disarming traps in this one. Probably because I'm not really paying super good attention when I'm talking about other things, but I'm doing really bad at disarming traps. Good thing they don't hurt me that much because I'm my character is really tough with lots of elemental resistance and so forth. Alright, what do we have going on here? Hard to spell, huh? But I also know that my system that I'm working on is very much not going to be for everyone. Like, it's going to be for a small portion of the, of the gaming population. Because A, it's really complex. B, the se setting is super weird. And C, the, um, the sort of... Design choices I've made are likely to be something that a lot of people don't find enjoyable. But I don't actually care about lots of people liking my game. Mostly I just want to run it myself for people and, you know, hypothetically, if I get it to a finished state at some point, I could try to, you know, get started or get it printed or something for a small number of people, but I have no interest in ever making money off of it. No matter no matter how finished or good it, it becomes. I I never really want to make any money regardless. I've already put a lot of work into it though. Quite quite a lot, actually. Alright, well we've destroyed some pots. We're in a cool room here. Interesting ceiling thingy. 
Why do I feel like I'm gonna get attacked when I... I'm totally gonna get attacked. You like an element of randomness expressed via dice? For most, if not all, of my gaming experience. An outside random contribution like dice rolls can steer the game in a direction that it would not have otherwise gone. That's true. That's true. That's a good point. And I've grappled with the whole no randomness thing. Ah. Oh. Robes of the Dark Empyrean. That's the third piece of that set that I've gotten. Very golden black, I see. I don't think I'll switch to him, though. I like my heavy armor too much now. Fuck you, lightning mine. Apparently this leads to the peak. Where we will presumably meet up with Ethan Engar. Seems like a standard L-E-M-F move. I don't know what that is. Leash exploiting motherfucker. Ah, right. Got a polash, the exploitation. Got a what? Polash? Okay, there's a lot of Ettons and shit up here. And wolves. Ettons and wolves are like the worst combination. Wolves can be really annoying. Shitload of wolves. Fucking wolves. Oh good, that's what we needed. More Eddins involved. I'm gonna have to drink a potion. I haven't drank a potion in a while, but I'm gonna have to drink one here. I'm sick of this shit.
take a couple potions there. All right, good night, Tim. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for hanging out, chatting with me. Have a good one. See you later, buddy. Leash the leash exploitation. Polash. I, I get it now. Police the leash. Police. I just used a Prismere pick, pick and got two white flake. Two white flake in a very hard chest. This is... See, this is where the game is fucking with me. This is where I am being fucking troll. Hashtag double flaked. <laughs> That's right, Knox. That is fucking right. So now I'm torn between these two games that I want to run. I was working on my second 2.5 edition Dark Sun. But then I discovered this old school shit. And there's some stuff about it that I really like. Sack value. I really want to run an Immortals game, because check this out. You would love this shit, Nox. So would Saito. There's, there's a whole rule set, there's a whole box set about it, and I've been looking at it a lot, where you play as Immortals, you, you can play, your characters are literally gods, and you can, like, do whatever you want, basically, you can create whatever you want, you can create your own species. You can create your own planes and worlds and shit. And, and you can make... 
you can create species and then and then like help them help them grow into a whole new so i was like oh man nox could make all kinds of bovine related things it would be amazing you could create the literal secret cow level yes with the grand winters. No! I'm gonna die! Oh, shit. Oh, I killed him and then I still died from the bleeding! No! There is no fucking chance this is my last save. Ooh, I've got to do all these battles again, including this really hard one. Why? All the Google image cows would be brought to life. Oh my god. I'm a guh. I'm a guh. Oh, I fucking up. I'm fucking up. I didn't mean to trigger that. I'm trying to get everything marked so that I can go into fucking So that I can reckon. it up. Reconnaissance. 
I fucked it up. I didn't even I didn't even finish with the fate shift on anybody. So then I had to fucking kill those guys again. That was rude. Very rude. That bleeding NPC taught us we can live for days while bleeding. I know, right? And yet now, suddenly, bleeding kills you. Hold on, I, now that I know there's nothing but fucking white flake in here, I'm not going to use a Prismere pick. Of course, I don't really want to break 20 other picks. Wait, there's different shit this time. Hmm. <laughs> Reconnaissance. Six hundred and seventy seven gold. That white flake. Sad and war priests are motherfuckers. Execute. Hold in to execute. Hold in to execute. Hold in to execute. That's right, I'm holding in to execute. What's up, shaman? I thought there was a war priest up here. Uh, 
cool, I got my reckoning back. I got my reckoning, reckoning, reckoning. I got my reckoning, reckoning, reckoning. Some sweet ass ruins up here. Without. Oh, you know what? I, I forgot my water. Hold on. Hold on. I'm like, why am I having no waters to drink? And then I figured it out. The answer is because I, did, I left it in the refrigerator. All right, nice. <clears throat> Here we go. Hydrated and ready to rock. Feels like there's going to be a giant boss fight up here. You know what I mean? I've seen some other streamers have this thing called, like, Stay Hydrated Bot. It's a bot that just every so often tells you how long you've been streaming and how much water you should have drunk up to that point. But honestly, I always, I always drink a shitload of water when I'm streaming anyway, so I wouldn't really need to be told to drink water. Radiant Greaves. Huh. Lawless Chosses. Well, those are nice. I'd give up 20% ice resistance to get a hundred and to get another another 26 points of armor. Eh, that's probably not worth it. The ice resistance is probably better. There's Ethan Angar. Dude, we're totally gonna have to fight a big boss fight up here. Kriathnok Thintre, the Fae call it. Sky Crown Mountain. It's beautiful, isn't it? Like stars across the night sky, the varied elements of magic arrange themselves throughout our world in different patterns. This place is a convergence of one such pattern, a focus of the energies of air and light. Like Aeod or Sidious. Exactly so. This place is to lightning what Aeod is to fire, or Sedeus is to ice. Your power has grown so much in so short a time. It is astonishing, really. I am proud to have guided you this far. Alright, slow your roll, pal. Y you didn't guide me to anything. But okay. What are we doing here? At first, I thought I could contain her. That I could keep her at bay. But I was vain. Her power is vast, and she is tireless. Ever since your initiation trial, she has been worming deeper into my mind. Oh, he's going to be the one she possessed by her now. She made me wait until you arrived. I cannot fight her any longer. So I must try to end it here. Now run. Run! He just... Let me journal about this. Oops. Spoiler alert from the journal. He just went flying. Now I gotta find his body. It does make me kind of sad that they, the game doesn't have the technological advancement to be able to like let you actually get a cool view from up here. Of all the land stretched out beneath you. I mean, the fact that it's all just a blurry mess down there with nothing featureless void makes this place a lot less cool than it should be. Um, Ethan Envon Inga invited me to witness him craft an artifact like the Sunstone. 
only imbued with lightning magic. After witnessing a massive lightning bolt blast Savant Engar from the top of the Sky Crown, I should find where he landed and recover what I can from his corpse. His corpse is probably just, like, some chunky salsa down there on the ground. After a fall like that, after being blasted by lightning and then falling that far. Wait, there's treasure? Hold on, I gotta go back. I gotta go all the way back. I missed treasure. Well, I did get a couple shards there. Glad I went back for that Scarwood bark. Hashtag. I forgot, those things reset. Good to know. be bothered. Have you ever had Cracklin' Oat Bran? Oh my god, I want to go to the store and get some Cracklin' Oat Bran now. It's so fucking good. It's the best. I think it's literally the best cereal ever. And it comes in a small-ass box and it's really expensive. But it's worth it. I don't know what the fuck they put in that or how they make it taste the way that it does, but it's magical. Crackling oat brand, dude. It crackles. It so crackles. It doesn't look good either. When you see it, and you're like, "Oh, that looks kind of nasty," but it's so good. It's crazy how good it is. I don't want to fight any more Ettons right now. I gotta go find his body, which is apparently. Super far away. Which is apparently way the fuck down here. Alright, I guess I'll fight some Ettons on my way out. Oh, <laughs> 
have to have some crackling out brand. What's up, Frisky Narwhal? How you doing? Welcome back. Uh, yeah, this game's pretty fun. body. I don't even see chunky salsa. Oh, that marker was just a, like a waypoint. That's not actually where his body is. Really? shitload of Edelweiss around here. Really? Ah, oh, good. A Crudduck. Where the fuck is his body even? Wait. It's way the fuck over there, really? It flew from up here all the way. Oh no, I'm about to have to fight a million bandits. I forgot. I just fast traveled to this place. Maybe I can just slip past all these bandits. There's one chasing me. I guess he gave up already. There's the mountain I was just on top of. You'd think there'd be a good view from up there, but you'd be wrong. Oh shit. This is where he landed. Wait, he's okay? What Quen bullshit is this? This mage was clever. Ah, it took a great effort to break his mind. And at the last moment, he sought to deny my victory. Unfortunately for you, he failed. Are you beginning to see the pattern, child? The pattern of me kicking From your ass over and, and over. From flame and frost and storm I take my form. Who am I? Some scrub that I keep beating, I guess. 
What do you want? How could you possibly understand the music that I move to? Does the hurricane explain to the reed why it roars? I am the hurricane, and you are nothing more than a reed. Yeah, I understood your metaphor. <laughs> you didn't have to explain it. Broken. <laughs> Does the hurricane explain to the reed? By the way, in that analogy, I'm the hurricane, and you're the reed, just in case you weren't clear on that. <laughs> Let him go. I have eaten the fruit of Irmansul, the Tree King, and sown blood into the fields of Aesir Danon. Hashtag making shit I up. have sucked marrow from the bones of Arathi, and listened to the laments of dying stars. Yeah, I know. I am the Empyrean, sure. the Dark-Hearted, the Lady of Sorrow and Dust. I will not bow to your will. I know, you've seen no. sea beams off the attack ships, off Orion, or some shit. Oh, there's a lot of assholes here. Once again, I defeated you easily, Dark Empyrean. Apparently Empyrean is Amalurian code for a person who possesses people and gets her ass kicked again and again. Oh, the Sunstone and the Stormstone. Horals. I love the word horals. Hurricane, read it and weep. Good one, Knox. Corals of flame slowly spin beneath the surface of this crystal sphere. Warm to the touch and heavier than its size suggests. Oh, I wish Tim was still here. He has this whole, we have this whole running joke about the phrase heavy for its size. He would have loved this. Heavier than its size suggests. The Sunstone's purpose is as enigmatic as its origin. And now the sword, Storm Zone, which is what he just made... Distant thunder echoes faintly as arcs of light illuminate the inky clouds of black and gray storming across the surface of this crystal sphere. That sounds like it'd be a cool thing to have sitting on your mantle or something in your house. On Ethan Angar's corpse, I discovered a stormstone, a magical artifact imbued with the powers of lightning. With the sun, storm, and frost stones in my possession, I should return to the savant Aaron Methneen in Lathir at once. I don't know who Aaron Methneen is. Oh, that's the person who was there last time when I was supposed to meet Angar, and instead that guy was there. And he was like, hi, I'm the fill-in guy. I'm the substitute quest giver. <laughs> well, do you think I'm gonna run all the way back to Rathir? Because if so, you would be deeply wrong. Deeply. Read it and weep, says Knox. Excuse me, Nubs. So much to choose from. Out of the way, Do peasants. Not miss Leogriff's many marvels. Earlier Arcana. Citizen. No, I think what you mean to say is adept, because I'm an adept now. Could he do show proper respect to the Archsage? But I'm an adept. You're supposed to say, what's up, adept? Hello, adept. I'm an adept, in case anybody didn't know. Which is higher than a docent, which is higher than whatever I was before a docent.
Hello. Hello. Mm hmm. Trying to talk to you, Ren Pendergast. You today? What do you know about Kadok Reen? I was forced to fight and kill him. Quite a stranger, Kadok Reen. Never really got to know too much about him, beyond the fact that he was gifted in the arts of sage crafting. He's also gifted in the arts of dying. What about Lokara Fell? Do you know her? Ah, Adept Fell. She is one of my favorites. The woman has a way of rubbing people the wrong way, but there is no better investigator among our rank and file. Saving her life was good form. I owe you one. No problem. Saving lives is Later, kind of what I do. What's up, Prefect? As teachers go, Master Telemachus Rasp is tough, yes. but fair. Aaron Methneen, you seem to have a large arrow above your head. Alright, I got all these stones and shit. Ethan Agar's dead. Uh, so, what's up now? Good, you're back. As much as I'm dying to know what transpired atop Sky Crown, that'll just need to wait until the Arch Sage is through with you. The he Arch requested Sage. you join him in his quarters, just around the corner down the hall. Wow. I get to see the Arch Sage. I wouldn't keep the Arch Sage waiting, Adept. Tell me about yourself, Aaron. With Savant Engar indisposed, running the day-to-day -day affairs of the chapter has fallen to me. He's not indisposed, he's actually quite dead. What do you think of Rathia? I don't like it much. The city's facilities are suitable for our use, and certain parts of it are not without their charms. How long have you been in the Scolia Arcana? Do you know much about it? In moments of solitude, I wonder. With recent events plaguing our mages, so, will we survive these coming times? Probably not. Bye. I have completed my 108th task. Ethan Engar requested I meet him atop Skycrown Peak, where he was crafting a Stormstone. He was quickly possessed, though I was able to defeat him and recover the artifact. While attempting to report the details of Savant Engar's death, I was summoned to Rathia to report in with the Archsage Jubal Calidus. Aaron Methne has delivered a summons instructing me to report to Archsage Jubal Calidus in the Rathia chapter house of the Scolia Arcana. I should visit the Archsage in his quarters and discover what has happened. Alright, where's his quarters? Hello? Apparently it just opens. Arch Sage Quarters! Five times better than Arch Sage Nichols! Alright, here we go. Whoa! This looks like an extremely vast cavern down here. Why are his quarters in a giant ass cavern? With like, okay, this isn't just some cavern. This is ancient Arathi fucking ruins. To a major degree. <gasps> Has he already been defeated? Am I about to get jumped by some scary shit? Kinda looks like he's already gotten wrecked. Intricate glyphs surround the body on the floor, seemingly drawn in the dead man's blood by his own hand. One empty space is visible within the complex pattern, located just above the prone man's head. Place my hand. Oh, shit. I'm being teleported to some nightmare realm. The Dark Realm. The Realm of Darkness. And Shadow. And Light. 
the dark light. Greetings, adept. Up, Jubal. He doesn't seem very jubilant. Now that he's dead, I don't think we'll be having a jubilee. Summoning me here to a nightmare realm. The jubal's on this guy. At last. I had hoped you'd come sooner. The curse is strong. That you are here at all is a godsend. The creature that has stalked the minds of our savants. Yuala, Kadok, and Ethan. She is here. She has come for me at last. All I know is there's a lot of job openings on the savant level of the uh, hierarchy here. I'm just saying. What is this curse you speak of? The possession she used on the savants you encountered. I tried to fend her off. Though I stand before you, the sorceress has begun usurping other parts of my mind. I retained a part of myself and made the glyph that took you here. Good job. Who is she? She's very obnoxious. She is the one that has stalked the minds of our greatest mages. But there is a more troubling history than that. Once I have been freed, there will be plenty of time to discuss her true nature. Why are you asking me for help, other than the fact that I'm probably the most capable person in your entire organization? When we met in Talarain, I knew then that Savant Inga was right about you. Maybe too right. It is more than chance, Adept, that has brought you into contact with this sorceress before. And it's more than luck, I think, that you survived each encounter. Right, it's not luck, it's skill. I'm a badass. Alright, how can we stop her? I am not the Arch Sage without cause. I had prepared myself for this manner of attack. It is how I can speak with you now. She is assuming control of my uncontrolled thoughts. I cannot venture out of this sanctum, lest I fall to her. You must thwart her plans. Take this. The true history of our order. It is the only help I can give you now. Seriously giving me a history book. Okay. What of you, Jubal Calidus? How did you become Archsage? As the Archsage, I've trained myself to withstand attacks to my mind. Her previous attempts were weak, not as immediate as this. She does not target my conscious self now. She instead moves to conquer my repressed flaws, my misguided thoughts, and she will exploit them in time. The shame that all of the savants had to be killed. I have been following what has happened to the savants that conducted your initiation. Those poor souls. If this dark sorceress is done with them, she must have learned all she could. She must be near her goal. She's got one step left in her quest. The return to Rathia. If you wish to return to my chambers in Rathia, I will accommodate you. But do not wait too long to return. I need your help to defeat this curse. No, I'll stay for now. Good. If we are swift, we should be able to break this curse before my mind is completely hers. Can you tell me any other secrets of the Scolia Arcana? There is more to our history than books and scrolls. But we must solve matters here first. Then I will answer all you ask. I doubt that. Well, he'll answer all I ask. I just won't be able to ask all the things I would actually ask. 
All right, what can I expect from her? I mean, so far when she's possessed the savants and I had to fight them, they were really easy and it was not even difficult at all. But if I have to fight her directly, what will that be like? The sorceress has taken over some parts of my mind. They will be strong, magnified aspects of myself. Be wary. Very well, Jubal. I will defeat her and solve all of this. I have entered the mind of our sage Calidus, who is fighting off possession by Ciara Sidanus. He has asked me to find the holds Ciara has on his mind and undo them before he succumbs to the possession. Oh, she's Ciara Sidanus! I didn't realize that! We've read a lot about her. She was the original evil sorceress from way back that caused lots of problems. And this is her again. Acting up. Let's read the book. This book seems similar to other versions you've seen throughout the Scolia Arcana. And so it came to pass that in the years of strife, when the tyrant Queen Sidanus had sown the fields of Arathel thigh deep with blood, I'm pretty sure I've read this, but this might be different than the others, three unlikely souls found the way out of the dark. The first was a man named Elodan Bloodgood, a Varani shaper. He came to Arathel from far to the north, searching the world for the knowledge of stone. After refusing to build a temple in Sidanus' name, he was cast into prison. The second was a gnome named Maris Torix, a gifted Gnosticant. Gnosticant, because he's a gnome. He had long ago left the safety and comfort of his libraries to travel the world, to learn of things with his own eyes. For teaching a doctrine different from the unquestioning worship of Sidanus and her regime, he too was cast into prison. The third was born deep within the dungeons of Rathir, a young Alfar girl named Eleanor Brea, who grew to maturity, blinded by the darkness that was her only home. She was like basically the one that founded the Order. Upon Eleanor Brea's ascendance to adulthood, deep within the dark of the Empyrean's prisons, the gifts of elemental magics came to her. In fury, the girl burned the dungeon to the ground. Guided by Masters Torix and Bloodgood, she learned to wield her gift, and together the three of them dared to fight against the Tyrant Queen. Word spread quickly of a new group of masters, mages, and artisans who would teach any willing to learn. In time, others courageous enough to challenge the Empyrean's might came forward. What had started with a resistance of 300 quickly became 10. A resistance of 3 quickly became 10, then 100, then 1,000. Terrible battles of magic were waged. Thousands perished. Entire cities were scoured from the face of the world, and untold horrors were birthed as each side tried desperately to craft the means of their victory. The Empyreans sought the destruction of their enemies by any method. No sacrifice was too great, no atrocity too horrid. The darkest and the foulest of arts were pursued, and the cost to the populace was unrivaled by that of anyone's memory. But the light of the three refused to be extinguished. The strength of Master Bloodgood, his wisdom and his skill, set the form and foundation of their hope. The brilliance of Master Torix, his knowledge and his insight, unlocked the chains of their bondage. And the passion of Mistress Brea, her spirit and her fury, lit the way to freedom. What none could do alone, these three achieved together. Seven years after earning their freedom, high upon the heights of the spire of Rathir, they battled Sidanus. And the Dark Empyrean was imprisoned. Too powerful to be destroyed, she was contained beneath what would become the grounds of the Scolia Arcana, sealed away by the arcane glyphs and runes of our three founders. Here she will remain, and you, Archsage, are the only sentinel of her prison. For on this foundation was the order built, to reach the greatest extents of knowledge, lest the reign of the Dark Empyrean returns again. Guard this wisdom and find a worthy successor. So the whole point of the order being founded was to guard the, the imprisonment of 
Ciara Sidanus, the Dark Empyrean, and prevent her from returning. Different paths had led each into the chains of slavery, but it was there that each found strength from the other, and together found their freedom. And so it was that the Scolia Arcana came to be. It's very similar to the other book, but it's a little bit different. Time is of the essence, Adept. You must expunge her influence to break her hold on my mind. Look, I happen to be really good at expunging influences. I'm uh, what they call an influence expunger in certain circles. So don't even trip. I'm inside this dude's mind, but I'll still find some white flake and be able to use it in the real world. Because that's how these things work. Hard. Dispel the possession begins. A lot of dispelling is going to have to happen here, I think. Mantle key. This strange key was found in the Archsage's mind. This strange scroll was found in the Archsage's mind. The possession begins. It has come. What Ephraim has warned me of, the fear that has plagued the mind of every Archsage of our order, has come to pass. She has awoken. She has found a way from her cell. I thought, when such a time came, it would prove to be a more marked event, that we would notice as the harbinger of her freedom. And though I had reports of an initiate whose trial killed some savants and drove others to madness, she did not appear immediately. And that was her greatest triumph. For all that we knew of her, we expected her appearance to be marked by cataclysm and chaos. The raging storm has no need of subtlety and cleverness. For with a whim, its winds can rip flesh from bones and burn all in its path. And just so you know, in this analogy, she's the raging storm. But, we, but she knew we would gird ourselves for such assaults, and connived to overwhelm the strongest of our orders from the shadows. And now there are two left, myself and the mind of the initiate who was present at her summoning. Ah, uh, I'm an adept now. Even now I feel my mind beginning to falter. Ethan Engar must have fallen, and with him there is but one left whom I can support in earnest to assume the mantle of Archsage. But I cannot falter yet. I will summon the once-was initiate here, and with aid wrest control of my mind free from the Dark Sorceress. To have my mind be walked upon is... troubling. There are many things in here I wish no one to face or learn, for they are the things I had to rid myself of long ago when I assumed leadership of the Scolia Arcana. But if she is to be felled, I must be rid of her. I'm about to find this guy's creepy ass midget porn and shit. Oh, good. Getting wrecked.
Hammer of Ferocity. Look at that big ass fucking Prismere Hammer of Kaboomy. The Hammer of Kaboomy is what it should be called. Frozen Longsword. Ugh, blasphemy. This unlock the mantle passes. Ah, with the key. Now we got a patronage key. And the mantle passes. Another another bit of this guy's live journal that we're reading. He has passed. After but a few weeks. Upon attaining the level of Savant, I was summoned to the chambers of the Arch Sage, deep in the cavern beneath our chapter house, and I found him on the floor, struggling for breath, but otherwise still. Helped to his senses, he reveals that he was dying, and though Balin had reached out to take Ephraim, he had yet to draw him to death. It was then that he laid everything bare. No truth was omitted, no lie spoken. The true purpose of our order, the true meaning of our values and studies, were after all my life made plainly understood. And with that, he passed, pressing the band of cloth, the ring of the arch sage, into my hand. The ring of the arch sage is made of cloth? I was to take the reins, he said. For better or worse, it had to be me. Okay. Some Ettons. Why are there Ettons? In this dude's mind. That's just weird. This dude got Ettons on his mind. Got my mind on my Ettons and my Ettons on my mind. Slaughterer's Gauntlets. Coles and Mergen. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. All these dead people here. Skeletons playing cards, and there's a butcher's cleaver stuck into one of the cards. I don't have the correct key for that. Okay. Oh shit, son. Shit just got all mystical. You are too late, child. Ambition. Even if you halt my ensnarement of the Arch Sage's mind, I have already accomplished what I needed. I have seen all that I need to see, and you have served your purpose well. I would never serve a porpoise. Wait, what? What have you done to his mind? This body is the incarnation of the Arch Sage's goals and ideals. For all his aspirations, the man is a slave to his discipline. It is a pity. Had I the time to foster some of these ambitions, he would make a useful pawn, just like you. What do you mean, my purpose? Do you not understand, child? It was your initiation that freed me. The magic of the spell could not find your potential. 
And so it shows the greatest power this world has ever known. I see. Do you not understand? The magic of the spell could not find your potential. And so it shows the greatest power Enough this, of this world Time has to die. All you will do is strike down this man's twisted determination. The world might thank you, in time, but this is not the only hook into his mind. There are so many flaws to exploit. You see all the parts of himself he ignored, the sacrifices he made to become the arch-sage he thinks he is, and they shall rise again. Taste his ambition. I don't want to taste his You will know my- Taste the rainbow, motherfucker. Sacrifice. Ambition. I have discovered that Ciara Sidanus had ensnared Archsage Kalidus' ambition. In an attempt to overtake his mind, I have managed to undo that influence. I shall continue exploring to find other attempts at possession. Continue exploring. I don't have the right key for this. Or the last one. Have to come back. <laughs> Ettens.
Ah. Left key. Coins and an odd patronage. Odd patronage. Art Sage Ephraim has taken me into his confidence once more, though I do not know why. Where to I appraise my skills honestly, I have only a tolerable competency and interest in gem craft and alchemy. I found some small enjoyment in the art of creating and dispelling wards, but there is only one application of the craft that I truly find myself attracted to and master of, battle magic. At first, it was no small shame of mine that, unlike the scholastic brethren I trained with for the majority of my life, I did not wish to live my life always in the library. My father, from what little I recall of him, lived part of his life as a warrior, and I suppose that blood was passed down to me. But still, what use would I be as an apprentice to the arch-sage of our order? Should that rank not go to a better-rounded student of magic? I know little of the arch-sage's duties. Indeed, I believe it was my inquiries regarding this ignorance that first brought myself to arch-sage Ephraim's attention. But should they not act as custodian to the whole business of the order and not merely one part of it? There are many better candidates amongst my peers, who, upon noticing Archsage's Ephraim's increased attention to myself, have made similar claims in less polite terms. To be fostered by one as the Archsage, I do not wish a chain of ink and parchment on myself. As long as magic changes, there will always be battles to be fought with it. So the Archsage wanted to fight some shit. I wonder if that key is the one that I need for either of these two things over here. Now that key is for this one. Indifference is over here. How much difference does it make? I see that my attempts to take hold of the Arch Sage's ambitions were less than successful. Not that he cares. There are, after all, so many flaws for me to hook into, to exploit. Already I have gleaned from his thoughts all I need. Perhaps you would like to know his feelings towards me, Ciara Sedanus? How are you manipulating him? In all the minds I have seen, there have been none that carried such indifference as this Arch Sage. Does he care about the wars that wage across his land? No. Does he care for the lives of his subordinates? Not in the slightest. He long ago surrendered to the inevitability of my return. So you are Ciara Sidanus. I thought so. Yes. I am the tyrant queen of the Dark Empyrean. The fools of the Scolia Arcana believe I was killed. But the Arch Sage knows the truth. It is, perhaps, why he has surrendered all hope. He knows I cannot be defeated. Only delayed. Well, I can defeat you. And I'm going to show you that right now. I don't think we will do battle. Uh-oh, that doesn't Not sound quite good. yet. I wish to bask a while longer in this man's pathetic apathy. But know that I am close. Close to freedom. I have learned all I needed. When I walk once more, you will learn the cost of your ignorant threats. <laughs> now let so. us see how well you fare. Not against me, but against some of the nightmares dwelling within your arch sage's head. Let us fight!
camera angle is not great right now. Oh, now we got to fight. All indifference went down easy. Impenetrable gauntlets. Uh, that is a lot of block efficacy. I think I'm going to wear those. Talent key, and I got the world I left note. I have rid the Archsage's mind of Sierra Sidanus's influence. Probably felt rather indifferent about that fight. Yeah, I guess so, Nox. I should return to the Archsage and have him send us back to his quarters in the Rithia Chapter House. But I got shit to read first. I got this guy's live journal to read. And if she thought that leaving those flowers pressed in the tome would work, she was right. By the gods, I thought that years of books and tutelage and learning would be enough to prepare me for anything, for the world of troubles and problems that I might eventually have to solve, and they did not. Nothing could have prepared me for her, sitting on a hill and waiting for me as the sun came down, the wind teasing out the red-brown hair that flowed like wine and water, so long for it had never touched a blade in its life, she laughed, and it smelled like apples' smell. She smiled, and it sounded like birds in spring. I only came to test her aptitude to spellcraft, and in those scant seconds before we spoke to one another, I nearly fell so far into her eyes that I could not hope to escape. How could a force as strong as this exist? Am I just a fool in a line of fools that spans the centuries? Disarmed though I was, I carried out my duly appointed task. She laughed and told me that she had no desire to lead a life of craft and books and study, to forsake life as it is lived for life as it might be. And looking into her eyes, I could not f come to find her at fault. There is a world out there that is different from one that we of the Scolia lead. I walked away from that world some time ago, and only once, when I met her, have I ever had cause to regret that decision. Maybe that's why he's indifferent. Waterfalls of the mind. How very scandalous. So scandalous. Scandal as a motherfucker. Hey, look at that. I didn't notice that statue before. That looks like a fucking gnome with a huge ass book with vines hanging off of it. Oh, I see. It's statues of all three of them. Brea and... The blood god, good guy, and the master of Torex, or whatever, the three founders. Well done, Adept. No. We're not going to have that conversation yet. The flame key. The talent. Professor Iowillen was sore at me today because my potion was able to cure the aurochs. CURING THE aurochs. Hashtag cure the aurochs. Of clover bloat. Yeah, you gotta watch out for clover bloat when you're an Amalurian cow. Eat too much clover, you get clover bloat. I was able to cure the aurochs of clover bloat, and Valians wasn't. She said I had relied too much on luck to ensure my balances were correct and that Valian's reagents had wilted in the summer heat, but I know the real reason she's mad is because her prized student isn't as good as the human. The Alphar seemed to have wielded magic since always. 
and humans have had to make do otherwise. But every day I feel stronger and stronger. The Alfar know I'm not the only human that can use magic to this degree. And they know it. They know it and they know it. Clover bloat remedy. Yeah. They're afraid that they're going to lose the only thing that's kept them lording over us for decades, and Professor Aya Willen thinks that I'm the face of the coming change. She's afraid of me. She should be. When I was less than two and five, I burned my family's woodshed to the ground with a thought. Some of her students had to train for years before they could make as much as a cinder. And even though I'm good at it, I'm not going to spend my life studying potion craft and writing tomes. The heat from that fire still warms my hand. <clears throat> it's a comfort. The only one I still have left. So yeah, we've learned that this guy is pretty indifferent to the Scolia and being the leader of it and all the scholar shit. And he just wants to burn shit with magic. There's Brea again. The Wild Flame. This is the last one. The fuck? Mommy isn't crying. The funny men with pointed ears are taking me and Mommy isn't crying, but she looks like she will. Isn't she sad? Why isn't she being sad? She might be mad at me still for what I did to the woodshed, but it wasn't my fault. I didn't mean to. I just got so scared when that dog got near me that I threw my hands up and then there was fire and heat and the woodshed was on fire and I didn't know. I didn't want to make it, but the dog caught fire too and I couldn't stop it and I could only stare and watch as everything started to burn around me and I was so sorry, so sorry, but I wasn't enough. Daddy found me and hit me hard once in the eye and once in the back and I told him I said daddy I didn't mean to and he did it anyways I was so sorry and he kept hitting me until I stopped crying but mommy just stood there and she was crying but it was quiet and it was to herself and it's like watching her now and they're taking me away and they have me by the hand and they're leading me away and no one's saying goodbye and no one's saying I'll miss you and no one's saying they'll love me I'm putting the care of strangers and I'm going away forever to learn how I made things burn and I'm sorry mommy and I'm so very sorry well this is actually kind of sad now I feel bad for him. It's terrible, yeah. This guy's parents were dicks. Well done, Adept. Sub Jubal. I no longer feel the prying of Sardanus on my mind. You have freed me of her. Thank you, Adept. By freeing me of her influence, I can distill for you those thoughts you have liberated from my ambition. I can impart to you an indomitable resolve. For my indifference, I can craft a fearless impartiality. The choice is yours. Wait, how can you give this gift? I am the Arch Sage, but I am also a human. There were certain flaws of character that I had repressed. Sardanus intensified those flaws until they threatened to overcome me. By destroying them, you freed me of these flaws. I can give you the knowledge of this freedom. What are the options again? For my indifference, I can impart to you a sense of fearlessness. Through ambition, you can gain a will to strive for perfection. In many ways, they seem similar. But to you, the effects are disparate. I'll take fearlessness. I don't like the sound of discipline. New twist of fate awarded. Fearless. Ooh, that's good. Imbued with the tempered indifference of Archsage Calidus, no foe or challenge gives you pause. 
5% elemental damage and plus one to sorcery abilities. Quite good. A quality you certainly do not lack. But I think you will require every last ounce of our metal to see this through to the end. Now, are you prepared to leave? We have much ahead of us when we return to my quarters. Hey, Zozo Ken. How you doing? Raiding with a party of four, thank you for the raid. Welcome, Zozo Ken and Zozo Ken Raiders. What is going on? Send me back. Good. When we return, speak with me. The sorceress will not be suffered any longer. But didn't I find his dead body laying on the ground? Apparently not. Maybe he was just feigning death. I have to go to bed, but Sun told me to go here. Alright, well, thanks to Sun. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming and raiding. It's really cool. Have a good night. Mirror. There's brownies over here that aren't hostile. What the shit? This place is fancy. Oh, I have a feeling this is going to be my place. That I'm going to be made the art sage and this is going to be like one of my homes. There's a mirror here, but I can't use it right now. Oh. To Iwa. What's all this? This letter bears the seal of the Scolia Arcana. Regarding your letter. Dearest Iwa, thank you for your concern. I am well aware of the lack of learning in the newest members of our order. If nothing else, this should lend some credence to Rasp's concerns, as it seems that more people are becoming attuned to magic, including those who have never had formal tutelage. Our sage Jubal Calidus. All these, all these ama amateurs of magic. Gotta piss these studied mages off. People like me are coming in here, having all kind of magical powers. Not having really earned it. Of course, on the other hand... I have killed almost 3,000 things, so you could say that I've earned it. I've acquired 32 diseases, apparently. That's rough. It's a rough life. I can't do anything with this? Apparently I can't. Maybe I have to own this place first. Before I can... Dispel these chests. Let's see where this goes. This place is pretty dope, though. There's a lot of treasure in here. There's a lot of stuff I can't loot, though, interestingly enough. Like, you can loot some things, but you can't loot everything. Unbreakable gloves. Leggings of the Flood. That's all finesse gear. Can't use that. 
That is a very large buck. I don't mind at all, son. I appreciate it. Thanks. Got the RNG gods all over my stream tonight. Yeah. I love the RNG gods. Do some, I can't even use the sage crafting altar. Interesting. Or the um, blacksmithing smithery. Smithery. The forge. Or the potion thing. Oh, so this is convenient. All three crafting stations right here. I'm surprised the arch stage was doing any blacksmithing though. I like these bridges of energy. I don't know what the fuck these brownies are doing over here. I just created chickens. I can create infinite chickens. It's like infinite oregano, but... <gasps> what?! The brownies start slaughtering them?! What have I done?! I can make chickens and watch the brownies murder them. That's, uh, that's a little bit fucked up. The fuck is the purpose of the infinite chickens with brown- uh, some white flake, that's good to, to... The Archmage had some white flake. I didn't get those chickens countered against me, did I? <gasps> I did get them countered against me! Now it says I've slain 20 chickens, but I didn't touch those chickens. I have saved the Arch Sage from possession by Sierra Sardanus by ending the curse that plagued his subconscious mind. Perhaps the reason for my original summons will now be made clear. Good day. I wouldn't keep the Arch Sage waiting, Adept. Why did the Arch Sage go as far away as possible from where I was? Good day. Is he really just sitting down in the middle of the... Oh. This guy's goofy. Answering. I am sure you have questions, and I shall do my best to answer them. First, let me say this. No adept in the history of the Scolia Arcana has earned the Savant's ring more than you. Take it with my gratitude. You're welcome. Now prepare yourself. The time for suffering the predations of our enemy is at an end. It is our turn to strike. 
Our turn now. This is our time. It's unfortunate what happened to Ethan Ingar. Savant Ingar was a dear friend and one of the Skoliakana's most powerful assets. His loss will be felt by all within the Order. What's going to happen with Sylvanas' power if it seems to be growing? Is there any way to stop her from getting free or taking over your mind again? There is little else we can do but summon her. It might seem foolish, but if we do not try here, we will surely fail later. You really don't like being the leader of the Skolia Arcana much, do you? Dark times are upon us, Savant. The tragedies recently befallen our most powerful members speaks to a greater conspiracy at work. I should have acted sooner. I should have seen what was coming. That's true. I promise you this. I will do what is necessary to keep the order from being destroyed, whatever the cost. So what's your plan? It is time for you to learn the truth of our order. The truth of Sierra Sardanus and the fall of the Dark Imperium. I read Sierra the book. Sardanus was never killed, Savant. I know, I read she the book. She was imprisoned within the very stones of Rithia. Read it. Because of you, she has awakened. Don't put and this shit trapped, on me. She has proven formidable. Now to destroy her, we must release her. That sounds like a terrible idea. Why is it my fault? When Ethan Ingar cast the ritual for your initiation trial, he created a magic whose purpose was to conjure that which could challenge your potential. None could have anticipated that. To do so, the magic of the ritual would actually find Sardanus buried deep within her prison. The smallest part of her consciousness was summoned into your trial. Once awakened, she began using the minds of those involved to craft her escape. Yeah, I will check out Balding Phoenix, son. I, I followed him. Who else knows this truth? The truth of the Scoliarchana's founding, its true purpose, is a secret that has been passed down from Arch Sage to Arch Sage. We have many savants within our order. Those supremely gifted in the arts of alchemy or sagecrafting or scholarship. But there is a reason that arch sages are chosen according to their mastery of war magic. Because one day, Sardanus will return and one must be prepared to face her. That makes sense. Alright, what do I do? Since her awakening, Sardanus has been reaching out from her prison and possessing mages within our order. Her goal was the creation of three elemental keys. The sun, storm, and frost stones that you hold now. We will use these keys exactly as Sardanus intended. We will free her, and I will kill her. Okay, but it's said in the book that she was too powerful for even the three great founders of the Order to kill. What makes you think you can kill her? What happens if you fail and now she's out and she's free and she takes over the whole fucking world again and rules as a horrible tyrant sorcerer that fucks up the whole world? Because you thought, oh, no problem, I can kill her. We've already seen that she couldn't be killed, that's why she had to be in prison. I mean, I'm just saying, this plan is absolute shit. I need time to prepare. Do not take too long. We must strike quickly if we are to defeat Sedanus. Good luck. I'm just gonna write in my journal, Jubal wants to do some crazy shit. I've completed my 109th task. I was summoned by Jubal Kalidus, Archsage of the Scolia Arcana, and helped him fight off possession from within his own mind. I have earned the rank of Savant of the Scolia Arcana. I'm already a Savant.
Archsage Kaladus is prepared to take the fight to the enemy that has been stalking me since my initiation. He is waiting for me in the grounds of the Scolia Arcana. I should speak with him when I'm ready to fight the sorceress. Got some gold nuggets. Nuggets. I got my savant's ring. 10%, 10%, 25 mana. Alright, I'm gonna wear the Savant's Ring. And then... The Adept's Ring. Docent's Ring, I'm done with you. So now between these two, I've got minus 17% mana cost, plus 45 mana, and plus 17% to all my elemental damage. That's pretty fucking good. Pretty fucking good. It's PFG, they say in the industry. The next thing to do is talk to Kalidus, but I think I should probably go sell some shit first, because I don't know what kind of nightmare realm we might travel to full of loot. You know, who knows what's going to happen. So I think I am going to go sell some shit. Before... Before we do this. Good day. Good day to you. Time Lord is Candrian is such a disappointment. Wrong direction. City Watch, move along. Right direction. Do not miss Leogriff's many marvels. Watch my... this the motherfucker. Watch. Corrupt and murdered. Well, my friend, what'll it be? A lot of things to sell. Gold nuggets. Seventy three Freeman armbands. I think I'm gonna go over here to the blacksmith real fast. I don't feel like using my repair kits on anything right now. I think I'm Lyria going to. Your way. I think I'm gonna go get my a shit sword repaired. Of the finest quality, I assure you. Repairs? I can make repair. Oh my God! Look how expensive it is. Oh my God! Okay, no, I am not using this person's services. That's insane. 383,000 gold to repair my stuff. You are fucking on crack. Just to nearly anything. Alright, no, no. I'm gonna fucking use my own repair kits, which I can buy way cheaper. Because look, now I can just buy some more repair kits for, like, so much cheaper than that. 
a sword. That will do quite think nicely. He can sell some. Go into Cluricon. You'll want silver. I think he can sell some repair kits. Mm, maybe not. Somebody Tonight can. At the very though. least. Good. Can she? I'll sell you weapons, but if it's armor you need. Hmm? No, I think I have to go back to Walsh Manor. Thirty-four and thirty. Not Do a not gold piece more. Good day to you. Well, my friend. Now, I know he's got him. Or not. Maybe I already bought all those repair kits. Look, somebody here has some be. fucking repair kits. Uh, it's not going to be the gem crafting person. You? Every I, serious student shops. At I the doubt Lear Griff has them, but it's possible. Lear Griff does it. Lyrius light guide you. Who the fuck has repair Citizen. kits? Maybe, um... Oh, she's the general goods, right? She'll have them. I know I've said Step that up. about, like, the last See three people, but... She'll have them. Yeah, there they are. Oh, and lockpicks. I'll, I'll take all the lockpicks. I'll take, like, eight repair kits. Wind at your back. Back over a million... Back up to one, one point one million. So that's good. Back, back to see. All right. I only have one quest I can do right now in this region of the world, without going to a DLC area or. Oh, that's not true. Actually, I can do the Isle of Eamon. So that's that's the last quest. I have this one in Isle of Eamon, and then I'm out of quests. In, the, in this part of the world, in Rathir or the surrounding. Oh, I need to find those Wild Frolds notes also. I don't know where they are. Back to sea. <laughs> Lyria, like your way. We're going to come back here. Trinkets, sweets. Do not miss Lyria's many marvels. I'm just gonna teleport past you, don't even trip. 383,000 to repair my shit. Or I could buy some really cheap repair kits and do it myself, I don't... I don't even. Keep the pace! Welcome. Don't even. Do you even? Because I don't even. Alright, we're gonna talk to this home slice. Next. I might do an actual save since I haven't in quite a while. Played a hundred and one and a half hours. And I have a colossal amount of game left to play. I think this is going to be a, like a 200 hour playthrough or more with the DLCs and everything. But the conclusion of this is going to have to be on our next episode. So that's all the time I have for this one. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning.